And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're just going to do a few side projects that we need to finish up. Namely, one is we want to finish off this farm and actually maybe add a little something to it. Now, last up, we uh, we put these in and I was going to separate these into two sections, but I've realized since that this sweepy over here, he can sweep up that entire farm all the way to the end. So why not just put the sweepy docks on the end and fill this all the way onto the sides? I've made a whole bunch of changes already. I've changed the location of the liquid lock and a few things, but I think a, a quick fill in of the middle here with farm tiles and we can definitely inc increase the productivity of this section. I'm thinking this is going to squeeze in an awful lot more bam lilies. We did have to sacrifice the bottom row though. There was no way I could figure to get the, this all in there and still keep access to the bottom of the map. Uh, we're going to have to do something about the temperatures down here though. It's what, 2700 C in here, and that's probably only going to get hotter, and it's driven up the, the, t the temperature of the insulation up to 2000 degrees, which is a lot. Uh, good thing we made that out of obsidian, because if that was igneous rock, it would have melted already. It's still only got about another 600 degrees of give in it, though, so I'm going to have to do something about that, but not yet. For the time being, we're going to finish this off and get all of this farming sorted. Now, it's going to take a while for this to spin up. We're going to have to get all the mutations. It's going to take a while. So we're probably going to want to put in a temporary food supply or at least have a little bit of fun. One thing we can do is Paku eat seeds now. So we're going to have an awful lot of Bam Lily seeds floating around. So why not uh, put ourselves in a bit of a Paku tank? 415 Bam Lilies. That seems like a reasonable amount. Not. And the happiest, happiest Dreco in all of Christendom. Just look at them. They're like, yep, food for days. They literally cannot see the end of all the food. They have a giant playground of just nothing but bam lilies to play in. All right, now we're going to have to put in some automation here to empty all of these, because as these get harvested, these uh, these little sweepies, the very hardworking sweepies, will go along here and pick up the bam lily flowers and any seeds that drop down. We're not going to get a lot of seeds just yet because the, uh, the dupes we're using here are not specialized for farming. We'll be sending over a specialized farmer later that will level up to level 20 and get really good at this. But for now, our seed production will be pretty low. We do have to figure out a way to get all of this done onto conveyor rails and then get those conveyor rails somewhere. Hmm. Actually, maybe we should put in the fish tank first. That might be an idea. Put a nice little Paku breeding tank over here. Let me think. To do up a Paku fish breeder, what we want to do here is breed a bunch of fish. We're going to have a breeding tank with about, eh, say, about two to four Paku, and we're going to feed them algae to start until they're tame. Then once they're tame, we're going to feed them on seeds. It's just there's a bit of a bug with seeds. We'll go into more on that later. But what we do need is a tank that can support them without cramping them. So it's eight tiles for each fish. This should give us more than enough space for four fish if you really want to go up that high. Well, at the same time, the auto sweeper can reach every single tile in it, so we can sweep up any eggs, meat, eggshells, you know, all that stuff can be swept. So, yeah, I think that's where we're going to put this, and we're going to leave it uh, inside the tank. It's going to be right below the rocket exhaust, which is not the best. I, I'm not going to lie, that's a little bit inefficient. Oh, actually, we're not quite touching it, but some of our hardware will. But these rockets should only be launching one more time, and that's when they leave the planet, and that should hopefully never be coming back again if we've done this right. All right, let's get this started. Let's stick in a quick fish feeder there. We only need to feed four fish, so one of these should be fine. Plus, it's going to be some automated feeding we'll have to set up. Okay, that looks about right. Oh, and sweep it up. We don't want any mess in here. Okay, for four fish, we're also going to need to drop off in a few other bits and bobs. Let me figure this out. To scoop up all the eggs that are laid by our breeders, we're going to have a little conveyor loader right there. That'll scoop up all the eggs in here. Now we're going to have a whole bunch more fish here, isn't going to get confusing, but they will also get scooped up by this auto sweeper on this side and dumped into the exact same conveyor loader. This, this should simplify our uh, automation needs as we go along. Now, with that done, we're going to want to fill that with some clean water. The reason we're going to put clean water in here is at some point we'll probably end up with a gulp fish, and if we put polluted water in there, things get really confusing as it tries to convert the polluted water to clean water and it ends up over the side of the tank, it'll, it'll get all sorts of messy. This should be what the almost final product looks like. <laughs> almost, let's see. Um, actually, let me put in one door and I think, yeah, one door there. And then once that's finished and a little bit of a tile under there, we'll have 90% of it ready. After several attempts at trying to explain it in game, I, I couldn't do it. So I, I just came to a debug map so I can explain it. It seems the simplest way to explain this, well, in my opinion, is to show you the problems you're going to encounter when you try and pull this off. The first thing we're trying to do here is you'll see these this tank of sort of this little mini tank of Paku. This, these fish here will stay here and they'll drop one egg before they die. And then they'll die, giving us meat. 
And that means they actually hit reproduction rate, meaning if you keep adding fish to here, you can effectively store an infinite amount of fish, and because they're all stored in one tile, it hopefully won't kill your game. It's a bit like doing one of those shine bug reactors, but with Paku. You just need to get breeders to do it. And the way this works is, well, not that bad. Here is the Paku. And there's its reproduction, and it's going up by 67% per cycle. Meaning you get an egg in less than two days. It's, it's kind of incredible how fast these things breed. However, they only live for 25 cycles, and the first five is childhood, so you get 20 cycles of breeding out of them. It's still a lot. And to get the reproduction this high, you have to give them eight from feeder. Eight from feeder gives them a plus two to happiness. However, being tame gives them a minus one to happiness, but they still come out at a plus one happiness, which is why their total happiness comes out at plus one, which is why their reproduction is 67%. You see that happy 60%? When fish are happy, they reproduce 60% faster. However, their base reproduction rate is where this all gets a little bit funky as to why this works. You see their base reproduction is 7%. Now, if we go over here, this is a fish that's blown, hasn't eaten. And because it hasn't eaten, it's a little bit unhappy. But that's fine. Even though it's a little bit unhappy, it's still got that 77% base reproduction. That means, though, in 20 cycles, it will have hit 140%, meaning it will drop an egg before it dies, meaning it will keep reproducing. It needs eight tiles of space in the room. So you notice this is an eight tile room. It doesn't have to be eight tiles of water, just eight tiles of room, and this thing will still reproduce just fine at 7%. However, if we chuck that down to one tile less, and we unpause it, its reproduction rate drops to 0%. That means, so long as you keep these thing, this thing in an eight tile room, it will reproduce once before dying. Not only that, if you put in two fish in there, exact same thing. They don't mind that they're overcrowded. The overcrowded thing doesn't matter. So we've got two of them jammed in there in that one tile. Still going to drop a, an egg before they die. However, there's a problem. And that's where the eggs come in. If we grab an egg here, and we'll just drop that in on top of them, they don't like having eggs in the room. The moment you drop in an egg, suddenly the reproduction drops to 0% again. So, what have we done here? How have we managed to get them to keep reproducing and still whisk out all the problems that are causing uh, issues? Well, that's actually... Well, it's a little complicated looking, but it's not that bad. Here's our breeder tank. You don't have to worry about that for the minute. We'll come back to it. But all the eggs get dumped up here. And since those eggs get dumped up there, they're not actually in the room, because that is walled off by a door. So these fish are all up here minding their own business, doing nothing, and these fish down here don't care. They can't see those eggs because they're behind the door. And you notice they have two, four, six, seven. They have eight tiles of space in here. So all of these fish are perfectly happy. The reproduction is 7% per cycle, meaning they're going to keep increasing. Their, their numbers are going to remain stable. And the moment this fish hatches up here, they'll flop across here and drop right down into the tank. And then the moment they lay an egg, this sweeper will pick them up dump them into this conveyor loader, that conveyor loader, or wait, no, sorry, this conveyor loader down here. Apologies, this conveyor loader down here. And the egg goes up there and gets dumped around. In fact, let's watch that in action. I just dumped an egg into the tank there. Egg gets picked up, gets chucked down, goes up here, and boom. And we've got the egg dumped over there. Oh, here comes one of our fish. There's a new hatch. New hatch hops over, waits for a second, and boom, right down into the tank. So any eggs that are laid here, any eggs that are laid here, they all end up in this section. All right, that is the the containment tank, or the, uh, ooh, let's just call that the, the, the stable tank. All the fish in here will remain at a stable number. This here, this here is the breeder tank. In here we've got two Paku, we've just set it up to two for the time being. To keep these two happy, all we do is we just keep them fed and make sure they have enough space in here. And this room here is 16 tiles. It's actually a little bit more because there's those three tiles there, so these two fish will be nice and happy. But how do we keep the numbers in here stable? Well, let's uh, let me try and explain this. Let's grab, say, this one out of here, and we'll dump them over there. So now we're, we've only got one fish in here. Then let's say one of our fish, doesn't matter where it is, we'll say we'll grab one of these, we'll take, grab this fry egg, and we'll drop it in here. One of these fish in here drops an egg. In that case, it gets dumped in here, gets dumped over to this section, and it gets fired out across the line, as in across this conveyor system. And as it comes up, it gets to this conveyor shutoff. And we have a critter sensor over here that controls it. And this critter sensor has detected, hey, there's only one fish in here. Since there's only one fish in here, stop sending the fish over to that section. We don't want them to go over there. What we want you to do is send the fish over here to this side. Which means, whoop, 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 and it dumps an egg right over that section. Now, this thing has changed its mind again. It's like, oh, wait, no, we've got enough fish. You can keep having the more sent over there. We don't do anything special. That just keeps it at two. And, in fact, let's try something, uh, let's try something fun here. I... Built in a system, I haven't actually tested it yet, but what I've done 
is it should happen that even if two eggs get dumped in at the same time and they're one after the other, only one egg should get whisked across. Yep, see? The reason that happened was we created a break on the line. Uh, you'll see this conveyor bridge here. Let's deconstruct it for a second. You'll notice there's actually a one continuous line there. That's on purpose. Uh, the simplest way to, to demonstrate this is with water. If you get, say, water like this, and you run it up to here, that water is going to go up in one continuous line. If we had uh, continuous eggs going up here, there's a chance that two of them will get whisked over here and then end up with three fish in here, they get overcrowded, they get all sorts of cramped and messy. So what we want to do is create a break in the line where the fish separate out so there'll be one egg, then a gap, then another egg, then a gap. So all we do is, this is I learned this from the comments because you see this every so often, when you accidentally put a bridge on a line that's complete, oh look, it creates a gap just naturally creates a gap for you. You don't have to do anything fancy. I, I tried fancy things with automation before to get this working. Like, nope, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> so that's why we have that little bridge right about here. That means all the eggs get split up and only one of them will end over that side, meaning we end up with a, a nice stable system. And that should be how it works. Now, this tank here is 16 tiles in size. If you want, you can make it an extra eight tiles and put in a third fish or an extra 16 tiles and make it four fish to breed with. To start off though, you're going to need to use algae. Uh, there's a, well, you used to have to always use algae. The reason being these, uh, if you try and feed them on seeds, because Paku, I don't know if this was covered, but in a patch, they change it so these things can now not just eat algae, which used to be the only thing they eat, they now live off seeds as well. 0.3 of a kilo of seeds, or at least a third of a seed every cycle, meaning it's one seed will feed them for three cycles. However, for taming purposes, you seem to need, still need algae. Though, I haven't tested it recently, but I've got enough algae on the plant I'm working on, so I don't care. I'm going to feed them algae to start until their wildness has gone away. Once they're tame, I switch them over to bam lily seeds. They will quite happily eat bam lily seeds, and we have an awful lot of bam lily seeds going around, which means we should be able to support a tank with about four paku just chowing down on bam lily seeds all day long and really replicate up the amount of paku. And what should happen is these should drop more eggs and more and more and more and more fish should end up over here. I don't know how many cycles I've run this for, maybe about 70 or 80. Actually, it's 93 cycles, but it took me a while to iron out the kinks. There's 25 critters in here. And that's going to keep going up. And those critters will just keep increasing, increasing, increasing. We've got, what, another nine over there? So in theory, you should be able to end up with hundreds and hundreds of Paku. What it does to the frame rate, I don't know. And we might have to do a massive call at one point. But theoretically, this should be a win-win for us. We've got the uh, the Bamelies to give us the seeds. And we can mutate them as we go along and replace them out with a uh, lice lily if we need. And we're going to end up with a whole bunch of fish. Anyway, I I'm going to switch back to our main map now. This here is what our... Uh, what our end design looks like. We've made it with some mesh tiles because it's just easier that way. This is where we're going to have our stable fish and this is where we're going to have our breeder tank. I'll probably go up to about three fish to start. I'm not sure exactly how much seeds are getting in. In fact, now that I think about it, we could just turn this entire thing into bam lilies and the robots would, well, the sweet peas would harvest all of the, well, the plants would eventually rot off this vine. Some of them would drop seeds. It would be a much lower percentage. But I wonder would there be enough to feed everything? What's the drop rate on these for seeds? Hmm, 10%. I have been running the numbers on this and it's pretty interesting. There's 415 plants and assuming, well, I haven't actually tested this, but as far as I recall, most plants, it's about four days after they ripen, they automatically self-harvest and they have the same chance to drop seeds, about 10% chance. That's why you'll sometimes find bam lily seeds just lying around below bam lilies because they self-harvest it. So assuming it takes four extra days, meaning that's 16 days for each one. So 16 days to grow then 10% chance of them dropping a seed when they, they self-harvest. That means if all of these, we just left them there, did nothing with them, didn't interact with them in any way, would produce enough seeds to feed about 7.7 .7 paku consistently. That's a really big breeder tank. I mean, okay, 7 paku on their own wouldn't be a lot, but being able to actually use them as breeders and having this tank on top of it, that's, uh, that's a little bit broken. Damn. Okay, okay, maybe we'll... I mean, there's... No, we might as well combine both the options. We'll still send over our harvester for now. But let me finish this off. We want to get our uh, our automation in here. What we're going to do is have this auto sweeper can access all three of these sweepy ducks. It loads everything into this conveyor loader. Same over here and here and here. And then all of that is going to get shipped across. Now we're going to have to put in some filtration here to remove uh, lice when it's meal lice when it gets uh, when we start adopting the lice imitation. But for now, we're just going to have all the seeds and all the bamboos just drop down there. 
Why not? Then we can have them fed into the uh, the fish feeder automatically. This one will be able to just chuck them in and done. So that will be a little while. We've still got to send ourselves over a fi uh, fish to actually prime this whole process. And I think I know how we're going to get that fish over here. Before we can get around to sending over that fish, there is some accounting we need to take care of. I built all of these out of order, as in one, then waited a bit, second, then waited a bit. But they all recharge at the exact same time. That's a bit of a problem. It was causing us overloads, so I had to make some changes to the power grid. For one thing, we uh, plugged all the solar into batteries using heavy watt wire, and then we plugged it into three transformers to spread out the load. Now, when the recharging happens, you'll see it absolutely mauls to our batteries. Our batteries do not like that in the slightest. It's quite a big hit. In fact, I think I may chuck in another battery here just to help out with that. Yeah, one more there wouldn't hurt too much. But once they're finished charging, it's usually pretty good. It doesn't actually drain them completely. We seem to be able to handle it. Just means we had to do an awful lot of side work to maintain it. That was, um, yeah, that was an interesting amount of wiring, especially considering our limited resources over, over here. We did fire over, though, a lot of uh, aluminum. Now, down here, I did some uh, diagonal temperature shift plate building to, to remove all of the, uh, the magma that was in there. And the same over here, when we finally actually finished off analyzing that one. These are just uh, accounting things that need to be taken care of, namely because, because of the rock gas that was in there. Gas interacts much better with tiles, including insulated ones. This meant it drove up the temperature of the insulated tiles to 12, 2100. Like it was going to eventually melt them. We had to do something. So if you diagonally built temperature shift plates to turn the gas back into magma, then we mopped up the magma and dumped it into space. Now that there's only liquid left in there, the liquid doesn't exchange heat nearly as well. Uh, you can't really tell because those old tiles are in there. But yeah, trust me, those tiles won't exchange uh, any te real temperature with the, the tungsten until it eventually floods itself and is no longer an issue. At the same time, our our Dreco, which has been subsisting on nothing but bam lilies, somehow managed to drop a, dre a, dreclet, a glossy Dreco. I, I don't know why, 2% odds, just a very slim chance that thing doesn't eat bam lilies at all, which is a pity because uh, this thing was eating bam lilies and pooping phosphorite, which was necessary for the wheeze warts. It's not a big difference, I mean, we can definitely ship over tons of the stuff, we've got plenty on our home plant, but you know, minor annoyance. And right now we are... Uh, we're harvesting like crazy. I think I'll let everyone do one last harvest before we go. We're still waiting on one of our fish to become available for shipping. Namely because there's no eggs ready. These are all the fish we have and where's your egg chance? Well, where's your... Yeah, they're 17 years of age. I think they drop them when they hit about 20 and when they do we'll be able to grab them. In fact, is there any... No, there's no natural fish left, is there? Yeah, I think we... Uh... We maybe wiped out all the natural environment that might have had any fish that would be in a different pattern. The only other fish we have is down here in the bottom of this tank. Also on the exact same clock timer as the rest of them. Oh, that reminds me. How are we doing on the water? Oh, ho, 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 ho. We're almost all the way to the top. Our water tank has almost touched space. We're, we're going to have to enlarge that at some point, aren't we? Okay, but not just yet, not just yet. While we're waiting for a fish to become ready, to, fish egg to become ready to fire over, I think it's time we put in a little bit of accommodation here for our dupe. I was going to stick them in the rocket, but I think we actually have enough space down here that we can fit them in since we moved the uh, the liquid lock over there. I mean, bathroom, bedroom, dining room, and that's pretty much all they'll need. Temperature in here is going to be kept at a nice 45 degrees. As long as I don't have to go outside, this should be fine. We, we can put in a, uh, yeah, we can put in an atmosuit dock over here. Let's see, how are we going to squeeze this in? It's amazing how much effort you have to put in just for one duplicate. This is going to be toilets, this is going to be the water sieve for recycling. Actually, how are we going to power that sucker? I think, yeah, we'll take the power from this line. This line's not actually being that used that heavily. But yeah, you got to power this whole thing, you got to dump water into it, then you got to sieve the water, refine it, we're going to have to put sand in there, auto sweeper, and that's just for the one toilet system. It's kind of incredible. And then we're going to go with, we'll give them a comfy bed, why not? They only need 12 tiles of space, so done. And we'll give you some crown molding. Actually, wait, no, we won't go with crown molding. We'll grab you, where is it? An arrow pot. Yeah, we'll stick it in an arrow pot right there for your uh, decoration. You need that for the room bonus. Uh, actually, let me double check. It's been a while since I've actually made a proper bedroom. Yeah, single bed, no cot, no industrial machinery, minimum size 12, and a decor item. Done. Four tiles high minimum. And then we'll do food. I don't think you. I don't think we even need a great hall. Just give me furniture, mess table, gold amalgam. Put it there. Actually, yeah, we we're twelve ties or three, four, eight, twelve. Yeah, twelve ties will give us a, a mess hall. We don't even need a great hall because this person's going to be very specialized. This duplicate's just not going to need that. Uh, the plus six from the great hall, just not worth the effort. All right, that should be fairly simple. Oh, overflow water from this sucker here. 
that overflow is going to... Oh, one second. Yep. That's going to come up here and get fed into a hydroponic style. That hydroponic style will have a thimble reed in it so that any excess polluted water will get dumped into thimble reeds. And that will go into repairing and, well, keeping the atmosphere dock alive. And that should be that. Wait, wait. Obvious problem. This base is way too hot for thimble reed. Uh, thimble reed stifles at 37 degrees and we've got this stuff going to about 40. In fact, why is it so hot up this area? Why are you up to 50 degrees up here? What's going on? Hmm, I need to do some investigating. I think there's some hot rocks around here somewhere. We just extended the cooling loop a bit just to make sure nothing... Well, cooling loop? Uh, temperature stabilization, I think, is is more accurate. We're just counteracting the effect of all of these wheeze warts, which at some point... Hmm, considering how well the Paku is going to go, I think we, we might end up not using the Lysine mutation, but I kind of want to keep them around just... Well, I, I want to leave the options open, so we're going to leave them in there, though theoretically we could just rip them out and go with a complete... Uh, Paku based solution. I sort of want to play around with the Lysi variant anyway. But yes, where were we? We were going to fire over the eggs. And the thing is, I don't think you're supposed to put living things inside the interplanetary launcher, but let's just see how tough fry eggs really are. Like, how many G forces can they take? Because I think the acceleration rate on these things is. Well, I'm just going to say the acceleration of getting shot out of a railgun is, is probably a lot. I'm sorry, mass driver. And. Oh. One second. This could take a minute while... Someone says that's a feather duster. I originally thought that was just a car wash thing, but now maybe it's just a feather duster. It's cleaning it up and charging it up with static electricity. Okay. Uh, nope, you still did not fire the eggs. God damn it. Right. What else have you got in here? I think we cut off whatever else is going in. And give me a second. Uh, what I've decided to do is... You can minimize how much ma mass is launched if you want. And then what we can do is we can turn it off and on again using this switch. And it just helps us figure out exactly how to launch just about everything. Now one second while we send over some more rads. A right, quick launch should get most of that gunk out of the system. Come on. Oh, wait, it's going to have 15. God damn it. Every time. It just I think you can do five launches, then it has to do a quick cleaning cycle. Yeah, cleaning rails. It is actually cleaning. Though the feather duster one, I kind of like that variety too. So you can actually see it sparkle the moment the cleaning stops. Yeah. Now, what are we left with? What did you not fire? You didn't fire the aluminum. You know what? That's fine. We don't care about that stuff. All right, we'll turn that off. That also sent us over a whole bunch of reed fiber, which we can use to repair our Atmos suits, cause, because we actually ran out of reed fiber. I think 100 uh, reed fiber should keep us going for a while. We've also installed a botanical analyzer, so we can start having uh, examining those seeds. Uh, we just have a whole bunch of family spe subspecies that need to be analyzed, and those should start to increase as our farmer gets better and better at farming. Oh, and we need to move our rocket silos up a tad as well. I, I don't want the heat exhaust from this uh, boiling our water or messing with our paku. Radiated paku don't sound so tasty. Here comes the eggs now. Perfect. Uh, what we can do is we can grab those fry eggs and transport them down here into our breeder tank. Uh, this should finally get us started on getting this thing up and running. I know it took the entire episode, but you know, this, these things are a little tricky at times. There we go. Two fry eggs, which means they, once they hatch, they'll drop down here. They'll be able to eat out of the fish feeder and start taming. Uh, any eggs they drop will get, uh, well, whisked up, and we're going to set this to three. Well, it, it looks like it's at two, but realistically that's going to be at three. This will stay dumping eggs onto this side until we have three eggs and or fish on this side of the, the, the tank. All the rest will get dumped in there. There's 795 kilos of water, all the paku, that, uh, the stable tank should be just fine. And actually, how many tiles do we give that? Three, six, nine, ten. Yep, there's, there's plenty of space there. That is the algae. So there should be more than enough algae to keep these all going. Now that's assuming, like, we're going to send most of the crew away. In fact, we may not even have to send anyone here because this thing should be completely automated. Uh, bear with me. Um, all right, once they're weaned off the algae, which should be just long enough to tame the first two fish, once those two are tame and start dropping eggs, we won't need the algae anymore. We can switch them over to the Bamley seeds, of which we have 32. And remember, one seed can feed them for three days. That, yeah, that, there's a lot of seeds there already. Then uh, all the seeds actually come from over here. So these things will just run all the way to the end, pull everything out of here, including all the seeds that drop. They'll all get shipped along here and dumped off right there in range of that auto sweeper. And that auto sweeper can pick them up and dump them into the fish feeder. We will have to manually change the uh, the arrangement on that. It's currently just set to algae, but we'll, we'll dump in bam lily seeds later. Then all of the uh, fish that comes out of here, all of those fish are going to get whisked up here. Well, fish, eggs, polluted dirt, all that stuff. That's all going to get sent over here into this filter. 
This solid filter will filter out the pack of fillet, which is going to get sent up and dropped off to the tree. That tree is going to get fish fed on fish. No, raw fish. We're not even going to cook it. All the rest will get dumped down there, and that should be it. That should give us a nice, self-sustained, stable system, and we shouldn't have to do anything. As in, we don't have to even go near this place. In fact, does that... Yeah, that over there reaches there as well, so that thing... Yeah, everything. Everything should get shipped over there, and we shouldn't even have to worry. Though we will send along a dupe. If we send a dupe here to farm, their, uh, their farming ability... Where's the skills here? Agriculture, yes. For five levels, we get plus 17 seed chance, which means for... Plus tw for 20, we would get about 68. Plus on top of that, there's going to be a few extra skill points we can put in here under crop tending. That will get us an extra six points. We should be able to get them up to a very high seed drop chance, which means once we do send over our farmer, the seed output should be kind of incredible. I'm going to have to do the math on that later to figure out just how many fish we could actually legally support without any of this uh, stupid, just infinite crop growing here. Bandleys are kind of broken that way. All right. Next up, we are going to move these rocket sellers up uh, about nine tiles, yeah, up to about there. We want them out of the way of all of this, because every time we launch and land, we cook this, and I'm going to have to move the Radbolt generator as well. So let's get one crew back on board and send them into space while we move their rocket silo up a bit. We actually started to run out of food and uh, oxygen again, so I had to send the rockets back home for a quick resupply. But there's a couple of chores that need doing at home while we're there. In the meantime, though, this can actually just run on its own. I'm pretty sure these Pakufai should start expanding. If there's any problems, we can send our crew back. But there's a, a little issue that needs to be taken care of back home, and that's to do with our, uh, our water filtration system. Namely, it's getting a little bit chill. Ooh, actually, how's our water tank looking? Our water tank's almost full. Oh my god. What's the water pressure like at the bottom? I think the water pressure actually maxes out after a while. You can see it rising up there. I think it hits about almost 4 1,500 kilos, and then it just sort of, the, the top of the tank bounces again. Water pressure gets really funky at these sort of uh, pressures, or those sort of heights. Now, over here, you'll notice, yeah, we're, we're actually still extending this on as we go, but the temperatures are getting pretty chill up here. I mean, the, the rock over here is up to, what, 429 degrees? It used to be at 800 at times. And that means these doors are closed constantly, but they're still not really keeping up. Every so often this will go to 170 uh, C. That's as hot as it can get things. And if it does, the safety feature kicks in to stop it drawing any more heat. Otherwise, we're just we're going to be having too low temperature in here. So I'm thinking we bring some people back and we put in a little solution to move heat from here to here faster. Um, yeah, once we've got the, the work crew back here, we can put in a nice little system. I think it's... well, I have an idea. While we're waiting for them to arrive, let's maybe go over the uh, what we're going to do here. What we're going to do is we're going to run uh, radiant pipes through here, all the way down through this diamond thing, all the way to the end. And then when it gets to the end, it's going to turn around, and then it's going to pass through this area. This area is a vacuum, so it won't be able to exchange heat with anything. So by the time this, uh, this steam gets to the end, it will be boiling hot, or, well, you know, about 1300 degrees. And then it's going to come all the way back through here through a vacuum. And we'll, we might open those doors, or, well, we could bridge it over the doors. Then we're going to bring it up here and then inject the heat at this point up here. So we'll have uh, the steam flowing through here. It'll be 1300 degrees. It'll dump all the heat off in that tile. And then it will flow back through here, and it'll sort of smear the heat through this section before going all the way back to the end again. What we're trying to do is basically pull heat from this end and send it over. Now, why are we going to use steam? Why not use something else, like a liquid? A liquid should be able to carry more. Well, that's where things start getting complicated. Um, actually, let's just go to the wiki for a second. If we want to use a liquid, we need a liquid that's not going to turn into a gas inside the pipes. So we need something that can stay a liquid up until about 1400 degrees. So we're, we're sorting all of these liquids by their vaporization point. And you'll, you'll end up doing this when you're looking for a liquid to fit, uh, or a uh, liquid or a gas to fit a specific need. So in this instance, it will stay liquid up until 1400 degrees before vaporizing, which is perfect for us. However, it's a freezing point. Yeah, that's 799 degrees, which means when it's coming back through the 300 degree part of the rock, it will actually, yeah, freeze. Maybe we could get up to 400 degrees or we could cut some corners here and there, but 800 is just, no, that's not enough. So molten salt won't work for us. Then we've got petroleum, which unfortunately vaporizes at that temperature. Uh, yeah, these, these all look like bad liquids. Molten lead actually is pretty good. Molten lead has actually a great temperature range, 327 to 1749, and it was going to be my first choice. However, we'll come back to why we uh, decided not to go with molten lead as a heat transfer in a bit. Then you've got your molten glass. No, it's just, uh, it'll freeze, it'll freeze. Molten aluminum is pretty good, but at 600 degrees, 660 degrees, it'll freeze in the pipes. That will cause us problems again. 
So in fact, all the rest of them, yeah, they're just, they'll freeze at way too low a temperature. So that left us with only really molten lead as a choice. But we didn't go with molten lead. Why not? It's all to do with this value over here. And this is related to its SHC. It's basically how much heat it can carry. Uh, in other words, think of it as applying, if we applied uh, 100 degrees of water to 0 degree lead, how much would we heat it up by type of thing? This is not a lot. It, it's very, very low. And to say just how low, let's go over and have a quick look at gases over here. And we're going to have a look at steam, which is what we're going to end up using because it's the best for our, our solution. Steam, we can only send one kilo of it through because steam pipes can only, or gas pipes can only hold one kilo. Liquid pipes can hold 10. So we could fit 10 kilos of lead through those pipes, bringing out this much heat. So just multiply that by 10 and you would get about 1.28 SHC. However, just the gas alone is, has an SHC of 4.179. Yeah, that's, that's not, that's way more than lead. So with just one kilo of steam, we can carry more heat per second than the lead. One thing we could have done maybe is supercoolant. Supercoolant has a cooling point, has a condensation point of 436. So that means we could actually use steam, well, that as a steam ver or a vaporized supercoolant. However, I don't really want to go that way. That's a little bit tricky and steam just seems like an easy, simple solution. But definitely you could go with the supercoolant variety. Another option or the final option would be to just go grab, uh, where is it, get the best SHC material over here, supercoolant, and then rate limited to one kilo of supercoolant in the pipes. There is a trick in oxygen not included where if you are running liquid through a pipe and there's let one kilo or less, it doesn't matter how hot it gets, it won't state change inside the pipes. Meaning you could run 10,000 degrees supercoolant so long as it, through a liquid pipe, so long as there's only one kilo in the pipe at a time. However, yeah, that's, that's awful messy. We're going to have to extend this loop if at any point it backs up. If something happens, then you have two kilos in, a, in one tile and then it, it starts, you know, it explodes out of the pipe at gas format and then this whole area is full of boiling hot gas and then no one can ever come down here again. So I'm thinking, yeah, steam. Steam is cheap, simple, easy to use, and it's actually pretty decent at this. So we're going to run some steel gas pipes now. Oh God, this was all put here because when it comes to making radiant liquid pipes, Gold is great and stuff like that. The reason being, they have a very high thermal conductivity. This is just some lead and there's some aluminum. They have huge massive thermal conductivity, 410. This is the, uh, how much temperature it will exchange with the surrounding, with, with the liquid inside it and the surrounding atmosphere or solids. So this is really good. The higher the number, the better. However, when you start looking at radiant gas piping, they're terrible. Look at this, it's a nine, nine versus the aluminum's 410. The reason for this is gas pipes, radiant gas pipes are all made out of ores. They're not actually made out of refined materials. Liquid pipes, radiant liquid pipes are made out of refined metals. So in this instance, we can't really use these very well. Aluminum ore is pretty good, but unfortunately it would melt. However, iron ore, no. Gold amalgam, no. Wolframite, no. Uranium ore, no. That would, uh, has a melting point of 132. What we are going to use is steel. Steel is one of those rare materials that counts as both a base ore and as a refined metal, which means we can use steel and it has actually decent thermal conductivity. Don't get me wrong, it's not as good as uh, aluminum or something like that, but for our needs, 100, 100 thermal conductivity is more than sufficient. All right, now, let's just stick in a whole bunch of steel radiant gas pipes going all the way through here and all the way to the end. Then on the way back, it doesn't really matter too much, but I think we're going to stick with steel. Now, the reason I want to stick with steel on the way back well, radiant pipes on the way back, because if we use regular gas pipes or even insulated gas pipes, they're gonna take a while to heat up. Whereas radiant pipes, there's only 50 kilos per each tile. And because of that, oh, sorry, 25 kilos per tile, they heat up really quickly. So that should be perfect. Yeah, it might take a while for that to get constructed. Remember, we've only got a few people left behind and they're not our best builders. They're mostly farmers and support staff. Before we inject the steam into this, we might want to preheat the loop. I'm just thinking once the steam gets to the end, it will be quite hot, but I'm not sure if it'll be able to make it all the way to the far end without cooling down below freezing point again and actually bursting the pipes. We, we don't want any steam getting in here, so I think we'll just put in some natural gas. That stuff should at least pre-warm the pipe, and once the pipes are warmed, we can fill it with as much steam as we want. We've got plenty of steam there. I'm thinking a quick gas pump here, a little bit of pipes over there. Should be simple enough. One thing we did much earlier on was we uh, scrubbed out this biome. I was saying we got rid of all of the other gases. We put in uh, gas pumps or up there, down here, over here, and this entire biome is now just natural gas. It's almost five kilos. 
all of that natural gas is coming from, well, either the oil refinery, which is now overpressurized, damn it, and the oil well, which uh, also gives off gas. Uh, damn it, we have no petroleum being made then. We're out of petroleum, which means we've stopped making plastic, and that's probably happened a long time ago. Yep, yep, that pipe is... Oh, yep, that pipe is empty all the way off. Oh, wait, no, we do have five tons of the stuff on in reserve just so that we could make the super coolant. Well, that's a little bit awkward, though. I suppose we don't need the plastic. No big deal, no big deal. We'll uh, we'll finish off, though, getting this primed with natural gas. Then we'll suck the natural gas out and just move in some steam. I want to see if this will help us uh, expand more rapidly. Jesus, come on. There's just not enough... Um, it's just not, we're just not getting enough heat to bring it back to the center just yet. There we go. That should start the heating pro the warm-up process, I suppose. I think that's enough of that. Yeah, we don't need it a lot. Plus, we're going to have to siphon that stuff out of the system again later on. And we'll be able to see that stuff just gain temperature as it goes along. What are you up to? You should be about 300, 400, 600 degrees already. Yeah, that should preheat that. So long as all of the steel piping is preheated above 100 degrees, we won't have to worry about the steam condensing. I'm just really paranoid about introducing any gases or liquids in here because if you do, you're never coming back down here again and I really do want to keep extending this on. I would love to kill the entire magma biome this way. Just using the magma biome as a filtration for our water system just seems like such a silly thing to do. I think, yeah, I think the gas has gotten to the end, hasn't it? Yeah. And because it's gone to the end of the rest of it's coming back through vacuum. Let's just have a quick look here. Oh, has it already cooled down? Yes, it's... Yeah, the gas pipes are... <laughs> okay, we can see these gas pipes heat up to 1,300,000. Uh, yeah, and then it's completely ran out of steam before it gets to the end. I, th Yeah, that was exactly what I was worried about with the steam. If that was steam in there, that steam would have condensed into water by now and we'd be having horrible problems. Hmm... Actually, we could have just limited it to 100 grams and it would have the same thing where it doesn't ch stay changing the pipe. Yeah, that's just taken longer. But we'll let the natural gas flow through for a while. Once it's uh, warmed up the pipe sufficiently, we'll switch over to steam. This should be the last run through for the natural gas. The radiant gas pipes are 100 degrees all the way up to about there. So all it's got to do is heat up these last few segments, which easy peasy. And then that gas is immediately going to get siphoned out of the system and dumped back into the oil biome. It should hopefully not heat up the place too much. It's already 80 degrees in there, though. It should be fine. Just not a lot of it. This is the last pipe segment and it's now over 100 degrees. Perfect. So everything's prepped. All we have to do now is stick a gas pump in here and fill up this system with the steam from here. Should be five seconds. Just in case anything goes wrong with this, we're going to seal this up. Don't want anyone going in or out. We'll have uh, insulated tiles there to keep any kind of potential messes from escaping. And then we'll just open these doors so that people can get into the reactor. I've uh, kept people out from wandering into the reactor anytime they want because, well, not reactor, this uh, heat area, just in case they, you know, they'll always do something silly if they get in there at the wrong time. And that should be that. Also, there's a whole bunch of salt in there we should probably ext Wow, that's, uh, that's 90 tons of t salt right there. Didn't realize how much salt water we were processing. Yeah. This should be fairly straightforward gas pump goes in and then we're just going to hook it right down there power wise we're just going to pull off this line there's plenty of uh, available wattage on it and with that done we should start actually pulling a little bit more heat in perfect now this is by no means finished of course we will we'll have to keep extending this as things progress as in the further we bite into this magma the further we're going to have to extend that but that shouldn't be too much of a difficulty especially considering we have the disconnect utility otherwise we'd have to start leaving gaps in the steam and doing all sorts of stuff but anyway that's that done. Let's actually have a quick check back on Modilius. How's our fish doing? For a second there, I thought there were no fish. What? Hey, you guys are tiny. Ah, uh, they're age four. Okay, they haven't grown up yet, but tank seems to be working so far. We'll leave those fish to their thing for the moment. For now, let's see if this is working. It's the full. Lo the loop is full. There's now one kilo of steam going through that the whole way around. And by the time it gets to the top here, it's about 1300 degrees. So we're taking a kilo of steam, heating it up to 1300 degrees, and then bringing it all the way down and dumping the heat directly into this uh, tile there and into those everything here. So what we should see happening is the temperature of this stone right here going up slowly, even though the doors are engaged. So the doors are engaged to dump heat into here, and you can see 146.4, 0.5, 0.6. So even though the doors are engaged and we're actively draining heat out of this area to dump into the steam turbine room, we're actually dumping in enough heat to keep overriding that and dumping more and more heat into this end of the magma biome. That is good for us. In fact, we might do something similar this side. 
I mean, if we do the same thing this side, we can drain more heat out of this faster as well. I mean, we, we do want to extend that water tank down at some point. But I think before we extend that down, we're probably going to want to extend that water tank up a bit. We can put some background into space. Though when I was looking at uh, extending that on, I noticed something kind of entertaining. You notice when these shells are been fired between planets, they actually look like they've already landed, even when they're flying through the air. Like, it still keeps the dirt around it. <laughs> that's a... Uh, that's a unique way of making the animation work. I like it, I like it. Okay, I am totally out of time for today, but I think I think this went well. Save game files attached if you want to play around with this and see how well the fish work out, but I think this is going to be a, this is going to be a good success. We still have a few things left to do though to finish off this planet. We need to get this infectious polluted oxygen vent, take the oxygen out of it, filter it, uh, to turn it into clean oxygen and then dump it into this atmosphere dock and plus a few other areas. Once we're moving a dupe here permanently, they're going to need to be able to provide their own oxygen and their own food. As for the food, I'm not so sure about. We might have to siphon off some Paku fillet. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do that yet, but uh, that's for another day. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.